So let's do, well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Start. So you're in Edmonton, mm -hmm. and you're what, waitering. What are you doing? I'm being a waiter, and I'm not going to be a playwright. I'm going to write a novel, mm -hmm. and I'm partying and carrying on, and uh, and really have now come out since Wolf Boy. I mean, I think Extra, which was called The Body Politic in that day, uh, put me on the cover of one of their issues for Wolf Boy, and I hadn't even told my family I was gay, and suddenly there was this national gay magazine with me on the cover. So that made coming out really easy. Uh, How was that, what was that discussion like with your parents? What was it like? I never really, well, I certainly never had it with my father. My father and I never got along, and after he and my mother divorced, I, I've seen him maybe two or three times since then, and it's never been good. Uh, my mother I told over lunch when I was about 23 and the first thing she said to me was, well, don't ever tell your father. And it was like, you've been divorced from him for 20 years and you hate his guts. Why do you care about that? Mm. You know, it was, it was very, um, I think it was very hard for my family to accept the fact that I was gay, that I was the oldest kid. I was, I'd been the man of the house for very long. I, I took care of my siblings. I took care of my mother. And, you know, I did well. I was the one in the family who did well. And on top of that, then I was gay, and that kind of blew everything up for them. But I have to say, honestly, I never cared mm. what they thought. I never really cared what anybody thought. It wasn't, it wasn't, I, I didn't worry about being rejected for being gay. You can reject me for a lot of things. You know, if, if it's going to be gay, that's a really easy one to do it with. And my family still struggles with it. You know, they still struggle, not just with my gayness, but with my kind of... Uh, public gayness and my, my um, activism and that kind of thing. I mean, they struggle with that because they, they don't understand it and they've never really wanted to take the time or trouble to understand it. They're redneck Albertans, right. you know, and that is where they're happy being and that's where they're going to stay. But with all the success, does your mom ever go, hey, good on you for... Yeah, every once in a while I get a grudging sort of, yeah, I guess you did okay, but... Um, I don't think it's so much disappointment in me as just not, they, they don't really care about anybody but themselves. Right. Yeah. What about, so you're on the cover of this magazine, mm -hmm. and uh, Wolf Boys are doing well, and you're in Alberta, and you're, and you're waitering, and you're just like, oh. And I'm writing this novel, and I, I'm reading a lot of stuff, and I'm, I'm really struggling with the, the theater and everything, like I hate it, I hate what I've been taught, I hate what I've been writing, I hate what I'm seeing. And then in the writing of this novel, it, it started to get really poetic, and I sort of went, what's going on here? And then I went, oh my God, I think I'm actually writing a play. And, oh, fuck, not a play. Come on, not a play. I don't want to write a play. Anything mm -hmm. but a play, but no, it's a play. And I, I started writing it, and I went, you know what, if I'm going to write this as a play, uh, I'm going to throw all the rules out, everything that I've been taught, all this, this, you know, four characters, one set, no swearing, no sex, keep them talking crap that we've been putting in the theater for most of the 20th century. I went, no, I don't want to do that. And it was also uh, the first thing I ever wrote where I was smoking weed while I was writing it. And so I found that I would disassociate very quickly from what I was working on or I'd get bored with it and I'd go, well, then let's just write something else and jump to another. And so I didn't, um, I didn't censor myself and I didn't try to control it. I let it go wherever it wanted to. And initially there was no serial killer and it was just a a story about these six friends in Edmonton all looking for love, but it didn't have that, that spark. And then there was a, a, a horrible incident with a, a, the body of a young girl being found, who, a young woman being found who had been uh, picked up in a bar and dumped in the river after she'd been horribly uh, raped and killed. And reading the newspaper, the place where her body was found where it was a place where my best friend and I had gone canoeing the year before on my birthday, and we canoed the North Saskatchewan River with a couple other friends, and I thought, what if I found out my best friend did that? What would that do? And it was like this, whoa, thing, right? This moment of, whoa, whoa, there we go. There's something happening here, which, you know, as, you, as a writer, you know, when you find those moments, it's really exciting. And after that, it kind of all started to come together, but it was still really, like I think the first time we read it, uh, Workshop West did a reading of it, and I think it, it went three and a half hours. 